Guk is the most basic item on a Korean table. With just kimchi, it makes a simple meal. Koreans have enjoyed their bop with hot guk for so many years that they are nicknamed the soup people. Guk is a hot food, but Koreans will often say that it's cool. Let's find out more about guk and what it means to the Korean people. Koreans have guk in many forms. The soup can be clear, milky white, or spicy depending on the ingredients used. From the past to the present, Koreans have always eaten bop with guk. Today, the standard meal, called the bekban jongsek, includes kimchi, several kinds of namul, and a bowl of guk. There are hundreds of kinds of guk in Korea, including jangguk, gongguk, and hejangguk, all of which are made by adding plenty of water to a variety of ingredients. Koreans' love for guk is so strong that they can't have a meal without it. Mm. Sorry, I actually didn't have breakfast before coming here, so um, in any case, no meal hits a spot quite like Pekban does, and I think it has something to do with the cool. And Koreans will say that no meal is complete without it. Now, why is that? Hazy or clear, doenjang broth with seafood and vegetables, heijangguk, bean sprout guk, doenjang soup, the types are endless. How does Korea's diverse guk compare to Japan's dashi, China's tang, and Western soup? So, Koreans love soup, and let me repeat that, Koreans love soup. It's the basic of basics, it's a table essential. Some would argue that it's just as important as pop. Now, we have multiple words for soup, two of which are jjigae and kuk. Now, jjigae is mainly enjoyed for the solid bits, the meat, the vegetables, whereas the kuk is mainly enjoyed for its broth. And they even come in different eating vessels, the pot, the bowl. And there are an infinite number of kuk out there. I can even begin to list them all. So suffice to say, we love our kuk. And let's find out more about it. Korean cuisine is known for its broth-based dishes such as kuk and jjigae. In Korea, the dining culture is a one-pot culture with the whole family sharing one dish. Eating in Korea is not only about taste and nourishment, but also about sharing and strengthening the sense of community.
The history of gook stretches as far back as that of bop. Mugwort gook appears in Korean mythology, and historical texts show that Koreans made many kinds of gook using not only vegetables, but also seaweed and doenjang from the 10th century. The Korean table is set with bop on the left, gook on the right, and the spoon and chopsticks next to that. Koreans eat gook with spoons, which are consequently deeply rooted in Korean gook culture. The craft of making spoons and chopsticks by hand flourished from early on. The result is bangja yugi sujo. Brass, composed mainly of copper, is melted down and pounded into shape. In Japan and China, spoons are used only when ladling soup, but Koreans use spoons for both bop and soup. Korea's unique dining culture has led to distinct uses of utensils. The bop and gook bowls come in a set, just as the spoon and chopsticks form a pair known as sujo. Foreign brands also make gook bowls to accommodate Korea's gook culture. Brands from the UK, the US, Japan, and Northern Europe make bop and gook bowls, especially for Korea. The bangja yugi bowl is the traditional bowl used in Korea. It is still a favorite for serving gook because it's excellent at maintaining the gook's temperature and taste. Then which Korean gook is most common as well as most symbolic? It's probably seaweed gook, known as myok gook. It's eaten on a daily basis at any Korean household, but also on a meaningful occasion. In Korea, there's an age-old custom of serving seaweed soup to mothers who have just given birth. Their first meal would be bop and seaweed gook, seasoned only with soy sauce and sesame oil to avoid ingredients that involve killing life. Seafood and beef are added to the soup only after some time has passed in the postpartum period. Seaweed soup is also served on birthdays. In the West, birthdays are celebrated with cake. In China, the occasion calls for noodles. And in Korea, birthdays are made complete with seaweed gook. Of course, Koreans also enjoy cake, but it's usually dessert after seaweed gook. So in Korea, on your birthday, sometimes people will ask you, have you had myokguk yet? Instead of outright wishing you a happy birthday. And that's because in Korea, it's the practice to have myokguk on your birthday. It's like in the West, if someone asked you, have you had your birthday cake yet? 
And myokguk itself, it serves as a powerful symbol in the tale of this hamshin harmony. In there, myokguk serves as a representation of the cycle of life and death, and a wish for a long and healthy life. Koreans describe boiling hot gook as being cool. For many years, Koreans have enjoyed eating rice in guk, in a form called gukbap. Gukbap refers to rice served in a broth made with beef bone. All gukbap needs is radish kimchi on the side. Guk is usually considered a dish that accompanies rice on Korean tables, but gukbap makes a hearty meal alone. Its history began with jangto gukbap in traditional marketplaces. It was only after the Korean War that bop and guk began to be served separately. Today, Koreans prefer gomtang and solongtang, which are similar to gukbap. Both soups are made by boiling beef and bones for a long time. Until the 18th century, gomtang was food for the rich because it was made with beef. In contrast, solongtang is based on a bone broth, so it was readily available to the masses. Its origin goes back to the late 14th century when the king, after offering solongje ceremony to the god of grain, gave his people the ritual food in the form of solongtang. It is difficult to make good solongtang or gomtang at home because a large quantity of meat and bones must be boiled for a long time in a big pot. This is why solongtang or gomtang restaurants are popular. This is a gomtang restaurant in Seoul, passed down through three generations and famous for its rich broth. Good Korean food requires patience, an essential ingredient for gomtang, which must be boiled for a long time. Both solongtang and gomtang are normally served in brass bowls or earthen bowls. Gomtang in particular is always boiled in earthen bowls to keep the broth hot but refreshing. So gomguk are a type of guk that are made with beef and beef bones, so this makes them very hearty. You have examples of this such as seolongtang and gomtang, and these are very rich, milky, almost opaque soups. And this makes them popular with office workers, who will often eat them as gukbap, which is guk with pop put into it. Now on the other hand, you have soups that are made with seafood and fish, and this makes them lighter and clearer. Seafood is another popular ingredient for guk. Koreans can choose from spicy fish mayontang made with red pepper powder, or the clear fish guk. The history of fish guk goes back to the 13th century, 
when it was made spicy with Sichuan peppers. That was before Koreans cultivated red peppers, so they used Sichuan peppers to spice up their food. The fish gook was so popular that it was served to the king until the 19th century. Over the centuries, the spicy fish soup evolved into the ever-popular hemeltang. Seafood meuntang is a spicy gook made with ingredients like baby octopus, clam, shrimp, and crab. Abundant, colorful, and delicious, seafood meuntang is perfect for entertaining guests or celebrating special occasions. In Korea, there are many different words used to describe soup, such as Strong broths like gomguk are said to be shiwane or refreshing, whereas spicy seafood soups are said to be karkare or to have a bite to them. It may seem like an odd choice of words at first, but it'll start to become more clear as you get more of a taste for it. And then there's doenjangguk. It's the savoriest of all the guk. It's got a little bit of spice, a little bit of bite. It's a little refreshing as well. So why don't we take a look at doenjangguk? While seafood meuntang is the quintessential spicy soup, the best savory guk is doenjangguk. Duenjangguk is the oldest kind of guk in Korea. Koreans began to make duenjang in the 3rd century, but the record of mugwort guk in Korean mythology suggests that Koreans have been making duenjangguk since the Gojoseon era. Duenjangguk tastes the best when it is made with seasonal vegetables. In spring, mugwort or shepherd's purse. In summer, chard. In autumn, mallow. And in winter, spinach or dried radish leaves. Duenjang guk made with mallow just before the first autumn frost is so delicious, according to an old Korean saying, that you wouldn't even want to share it with your loved one. First, the stems are peeled, and the leaves are made less sticky. Then, it is added to duenjang broth, resulting in aromatic and savory mallow duenjang guk. But this is only a fraction of all the guk made in Korea. How do Koreans create the broth for so many types of guk? By far the most common type of yuksu or stock found in Korea is made with tashima and myrchi, and making it is incredibly simple. All you need to do is take your tashima, which is this giant kelp, put a little bit in there, along with your myrchi, this little dried fish. Shut to it, and close it up, stick it in some water, and boil. And that's all there is to it. Now let's go make some. To make the broth, Koreans usually use anchovies and kelp, or beef broth. Ground beef and chopped radishes added to the broth makes a refreshing bowl of beef radish gook. Beef radish gook tastes the best when the temperature starts to drop in autumn. Bean sprout soup, which is in demand all year round, is based on an anchovy broth. Add bean sprouts and some ground garlic and salt. Sometimes red pepper powder is added to give a spicy taste. So when you put the gochugaru, the Korean red pepper flakes, into the kongnamurgu, the bean sprout soup, it gives it this flavor that Koreans call eukunada, which is spicy, but it's the sort of spice that hits you in the back of the throat. It makes you go, ah, 
And that's what makes Kong Namur Gu one of Korea's great Hejang Gu. It's a type of soup that you drink the morning after a long night out. Whenever they're feeling unwell, they seek out guk, most notably hejang guk. The history of hejang guk, also called the alcohol soup, dates back centuries. The first hejang guk was sungju tang at the end of the 13th century. And in the 15th century, it became famous as hyojonggeng in Gwangju, Gyeonggi province. Hyojonggeng, which literally means soup eaten at dawn, is said to have been boiled all night at Namhan Fortress to be delivered to Seoul's noblemen in the morning to soothe their hangovers. Hyojonggeng has recently enjoyed a revival, as people came to acknowledge its historical value. The duenjang gives it a very clean taste. It's refreshing and not greasy. There are about 18 ingredients. The beef broth is boiled with tender Napa cabbage leaves, shiitake mushroom, bean sprouts, bracken, abalone, and galbi, so it's great for health. It's also easy to digest when you're hungover. Dried walleye pollock, bean sprouts, and kimchi are common ingredients for hejangguk, a popular menu after a drinking spree. But does Heijangguk really help with hangovers? <laughs> Traditional dried pollock Heijangguk is made by boiling bean sprouts with dried walleye pollock that has been pounded tender. Nothing beats this clean tasting soup to soothe an upset stomach after drinking. <laughs> to make bean sprout hejangguk, all you have to do is add kimchi to bean sprout guk. The spicy yet cool taste is a comfort to both the body and the mind. Many restaurants today make hejangguk with bones or clotted blood and dried radish leaves rather than the traditional dried walleye pollock. Hejangguk is great not only for curing hangovers, but also for comforting Koreans who appreciate the refreshment of hot soup. To Koreans, there's magic in a bowl of kuk. It can turn a bad day good and a good day even better. It's hearty yet refreshing at the same time, comforting and restorative. And in the Korean kitchen, there's a saying, that broth or stock is cuisine, and without it, food becomes a mere pastiche of itself. You know, it's not far-fetched to say that we have kuk running through our veins. And while it may not be the flashiest or the most iconic of dishes, kuk will always remain an essential part of the Korean table. Guk is the most basic accompaniment for bop and can be made in countless ways depending on the ingredients added to the beef bone, anchovy, or duenjang broth. It's rich, spicy, savory, and refreshing. It is a food that requires patience and care. And a comfort food that warms the body and soul.